Now in year 10, uh, this is your homework this week to revise the question, how did William gain control of England? You can see here, there's the four different topics that you need to look at. Submission of the Earls, the building of castles, there's the different rebellions that took place between 1068 and 1071. There is the Harring of the North, and then there is the revolt of the Earls, which happened in 1075. So let's get ready to go through this. I'm going to go through some key points with you, and hopefully this will help you in your revision for our big home learning quizzes. So one of the first ways that William gained control of England is that he made the Earls at the time Edwin and Morcar submit to his rule and they had to promise that to take an oath to actually support William and in return they could keep their lands. Uh, William didn't have to worry about the Godwinson family because they'd been wiped out at the Battle of Hastings. So he had all that lovely land in the south which he could give out to his Norman supporters, people like Bishop Odo of Bayeux, um, he became the Earl of Kent and William was well in control. He got crowned king on Christmas Day in 1066. Um, he made sure it was a religious ceremony so that people would see him as the rightful ruler of England. So that's the first way that he gained control, the submission of the earls. The next thing is he built lots of castles around the country, big, scary castles that would intimidate the local population. It would give him a base uh, from which to um, attack people. Uh, it would help him to defend particular towns uh, around England. And all the castles were built around 20 miles apart from each other, which was roughly a day's worth of marching. So the castles really helped him. His most famous castle that he built was, of course, the Tower of London. Um, work started on that around about 1078. Um, and these castles were a crucial way of controlling people. The first castles, of course, were called Mott and Bailey Castles. He also created some new earldoms that were known as the Marcher earldoms. And these were lo located all along the Welsh borders. The Marches is the name that we give for the borders at the time. Three new Marcher earldoms were created, the Chester, Shrewsbury and Hereford. And these were the three people that would control, Hugh de Vranche in Chester, Roger de Montgomery in Shrewsbury, and William Fitz Osborne, who was one of uh, William's closest supporters. He was in the earldom of Hereford. And you can see there, there's a little map, you can see there Chester, Shrewsbury and Hereford, a little bit of information for you. So this was a really important area for William to gain control of, the Welsh uh, marches, keep the Welsh at bay and keep England under control. So there were three uh, rebellions that took place during this time. Um, there was a revolt of Edwin and Morcar in 1068. Um, this was fairly easily controlled by William. He built a couple of castles, one in Nottingham and one in Warwick, in order to stop this rebellion. Uh, Edwin and Morcar surrendered, but they had to give up their earldoms. And uh, that's why William appointed a new uh, Norman Earl of Northumbria, who was called Robert Cumin. And this led into the rebellion that took place in 1069. So in 1069, uh, this rebellion here was a much, much more serious rebellion to William. It involved the Scots, it involved Edgar the Atheling, the Danes got involved, King Swain of Denmark, he sent um, some forces across. And it led to the Norman Earl Robert Cumin actually being murdered in Durham um, in the early part of 1069. And then there was also a rebellion uh, from Herod the Wake, which took place in Ely between 1070 and 1071. A much less serious threat, but uh, certainly something that William had to deal with. So those three rebellions, you can see there's a nice little summary of those rebe rebellions and how crucially they were ended by the Normans. So make sure you're aware of those three different rebellions that took place. William, one of the big things that he did is he brought in uh, the Harring of the North, and this was a very, very brutal event. Um, it showed how ruthless and how tough William was. He even ploughed salt into the land um, to stop crops from growing. The estimates are that 100,000 people died in the Harring of the North. Um, William had realised in 1069 through the rebellions of the North that the North were never really going to be fully loyal to him. They were loyal really to the Dane law. Um, so this was his way of gaining control of the North to essentially kill lots of people and instill terror into them. Remember Bishop Odo carried out um, a horrible um, violent outbreak um, of destruction later on in North Northumbria, in Northumberland as well. So there are all the methods that William used to deal uh, and uh, deal with the rebels, gain control. Uh, land, remember we, we learned about the feudal system as well. So the fact that William took control of the land, uh, created these new tenants in chief, that was really important. And the old earldoms were broken up, so they were a lot smaller. So you didn't get people like Harold Godwinson, who had been sub-regulus under Edward the Confessor. 
um, very harsh punishments for any rebels. Uh, their bodies were mutilated after after capture and uh, after being killed. Uh, people were stripped of their titles. There was the murder uh, punishment as well, which we learned about in the crime punishment course. And of course, those castles were absolutely crucial. So there are all the different ways in which William dealt with resistance and helped him to gain control of England. So one of the most interesting things about this uh, time period is that in 1075, there's another revolt, the so-called Revolt of the Earls. But this actually involves two Normans. Uh, Roger Fitzosborne, who was the Earl of uh, Hereford, and of course the son of William Fitzosborne, and Ralph the Earl of Norfolk, and then Waltheof, who was an Anglo-Saxon Earl of Northumbria. Um, and pretty much what these three wanted to do is they wanted to carve up the country between them. Um, and Roger Fitzosborne wanted to take more of the western half, Ralph the eastern half, and then Waltheof, the northern part of England at the time. And this re rebellion took place while William was away in Normandy, and uh, Archbishop uh, Longfranc was acting as the regent. Now, the rebellion was planned at the wedding of Ralph, who was marrying um, Emma, who was Roger's sister. Um, but while I've got cold feet, he ended up telling the regent, Archbishop Longfranc, about the plot. And the plot was quickly ending, showing really the power um, of William at the time. So the revolt was poorly planned, um, it ended up breaking up, and in the end, only Waltheof, being the only English person in, involved, the English Earl involved, he was executed, Ralph fled to Brittany, and Roger had his land confiscated and was imprisoned. And that was the last revolt that took place in the era of William the Conqueror. So he really had established through a reign of terror, through building the castles, but also a mixture of religion and trying to justify that he was the rightful king of England. He'd managed to gain control of England really, really successfully. Thank you very much for listening.